Hi guys, I'm Chris from the Tabletop Wargamers. So today we're going to be looking at the Tiger 1E from Warlord Games. It's the new plastic kit from Italeri. And uh, here we go guys, I'll give you a quick look at the, the front of the box art there on the box. You see the Italeri logo there and the Warlord logo there. See, it's, uh, it's a beautiful tank. <laughs> this is one of my favourite tanks from the war. Um, and it's a tank I think every German commander should have in his army, at least one. On the back of the box there you've got the uh, some nice pictures of some assembled and painted tigers. All looking great there and scary. So, the Tiger 1 came into the war in late 42 and it stayed all the way through till the end of the war. Well, it weighed about 54 tonnes. It was about six and a half meters long, and about eight and a half meters if you include the barrel of the gun. It was about three and a half meters wide and about three meters tall. So you can see, it's a pretty huge tank. It's uh, also had a crew of five. Um, the armor on the front was a hundred mil thick, and the armor on the sides and the rear was about eighty mil. Uh, the gun, the main gun it had, was the eighty-eight mil KWK. 36 L56 it was a very very powerful anti-tank gun. Um, this tank also had a top speed of about 28 miles an hour, which is about the same speed as like the Sherman and the T34 and other tanks, which were much lighter. So you can see this was a pretty formidable beast. <laughs> so the when the Tiger came into the war, the armor on the front was actually so thick that the 75mm gun on the Shermans was actually unable to penetrate the front armour. Um, they had to get within 100 metres of the side or the rear to actually penetrate the armour of the Tiger. Whereas the gun on the Tiger was so powerful, it could penetrate the Sherman's armour from about just over 2,000 metres. I think it was about 2,130 metres out. So as you can see, it was a pretty huge disadvantage <laughs> to the Allies when this tank came out. It was a beast of a tank. It's an absolutely gorgeous looking tank. It's, uh, it's huge, it's blocky, it's got a massive turret, it's a really really long gun on the front. It just looks lovely. It's one of the most iconic tanks of the war I think. Um, it also, guys, had a kill ratio of about 10 to 1, the Tigers. Um, so uh, if you can imagine that, every Tiger that was produced killed a ten, about 10 other tanks on average. <laughs> there were some battalions out there, I think, that got up to about 16.5 to 1 on their kill ratios. And uh, yeah, so as you can see, it was a pretty, pretty formidable tank. So what we're going to do next, guys, is I'm going to pop, pop the kit down on the mat, angle the camera down, and we'll take a look at the, the contents of the box. Okay? See you in a sec. Okay, so guys, this is the cover out of the box again. Just give you a quick shot of that. It's really nice. So, let's open it up and have a look what's inside the box. You get two screws with all the bits on. You get a leaflet from Italeri advertising some of their kits. Instruction sheet, so you can get an idea of Quite, just quite how many parts actually come in this kit. It's a pretty detailed kit. It's quite a few parts. And you also get a nice little decal sheet. There we go. There's some lovely decals you can stick on your tank there and personalize it up. So let's, uh, let's go over what's on the sprues, is it? Give you some close-ups of some of the parts. So we'll, I think we'll start with the main body of the tank here. So just here you can see the top surface of the tank. So you got some nice uh, vents for the the engine block there. You got some ca tow cables, some tools, some trenching tool there. There's the two spaces for the gunner's hatch and the driver's hatch. You can also see there's some zimmerit on the on the hull. I think the entire hull of the tank's covered in zimmerit, so 
yeah, it's pretty nice little detailing. You got a, a viewport there, I think it is. Um, there's some track guards, I believe those are there. Then you got the pintle mount for the MG42. You got the this is a like a crossbar that joins onto the the 88 mil gun to allow you to tilt it up and down inside the turret. There's a hatch there. I'll have to have a look where that hatch goes actually, I'm not quite sure where that one goes. Um, we got this little piece here which fits on I believe just on the top, towards the rear of the tank here I think. It's like a little uh, a little vent or something. Like that. I'm not sh quite sure exactly what it is, sorry guys. <laughs> There's a spotlight, that's the barrel for the and the hull mounted MG42. That's the the ring for the pintle mount. And this is the it's the section that goes along the front of the tank just there. It's um it's the front of the hull. You can see it's got a little zimmer it on there. It's got the ball mount for the uh, MG42 and it's got the viewport for the driver there. It's uh, really nicely detailed again. I'll show you the back side of everything. You can see the backs of the turret ring and all that, all the other stuff. You can see the whole of the vents in the the back are actually all holes all the way through, so it's nice. <laughs> we got the two wheel sections off the tracks. Very, very nicely detailed again. We have the arm for the tank commander here. It's just resting on the hull of the on the body of the on the top of the turret. And uh, the tank commander himself there. Then over here we have some little rings for the, the towing cables to tow the tank when it got into trouble. There's the rear plate, the rear plate of the armor for the tank there. It's got the slots for the uh, exhausts to clip on. And we got the bottom side of the tank there. There's not much detail on that apart from the bit of zimmerit at the front. So it's, uh, it's very nice. And we got the driver and the gunner's hatches there. Just there for you. It's the underside, a bit of detail in there, but uh, it's really nice. And then we have this. <laughs> we have an aerial. We have the two side plates of the armor for the tank. Again, we zimmer it on them, and they got a tow cable on the one there. And they have the little uh, the sort of skirts. I go above the tracks there. You have some of the wheels for the track sections. And there's two more there as well. There's the in the exhausts, and these are the exhaust covers. So they sort of go inside underneath them and clip onto the uh, back of the tank. There. And then you have the two um, two skirt bits of skirt in there for the back. It goes onto the back of the tank and just sits on either side over the. It sort of joins on there and hangs over the tracks, sort of like um, like mud guards, I guess you'd say. Then we have this piece here, clips onto the back of the tank. I'm not exactly sure what that is, guys. If anybody knows, drop a comment in down below and let us all in on the secret. <laughs> we got some of the curved track sections for the uh, for the you know, for the ends of the tracks, and then we got the actual tracks themselves. I don't know if you can see it there guys, but the, the detail on the tracks is very, very nice. There's a lot of detail put into those tracks there. You can see all the individual links in them. Uh, it's very, very nice. We got the front of the mantlet for the turret. Again, a zimmerit on it. Very, very nice. It's a little circle there, I think, for the, the coax, I believe. Oh, is it? Uh, oh, it's a pintle mount, I think, actually, isn't it? And I don't think there's a coax on this. Um, we have the hatch there for the tank commander. Ah, that'll be what the other hatch was. It'll be for the the gunner. That hatch there goes for the tank commander. That's the base of the turret. This is the top of the turret. You can see you've got a little viewport there. It's actually a hole right through. Very nice. And the little. Uh, 360 view, the commander there. 
We get a stowage bin on the back of the turret there with nice detail on it. See, you see the little details of the the clasps and the the hinges for it. Very nice. Nice detail on the turret ring there. And then we get the sides of the turret. Then again with zimmer it on. You get the little viewport, some spare track. There's like a little hatch on that one. Very very nice detail. I'll quickly flip it over and show you the back side of everything. See the little teeth and the tracks, very nice. So, there is the kit, guys. Okay. Okay, guys, so that was the contents of the box. Now I've actually assembled the tiger and I've got it here. It's, I'm sorry, it's unpainted, but it's. Uh, I've assembled it all nice for you to have a, have a nice look at the kit fully assembled. Uh, I'll just rotate it slowly for you guys. So you can have a nice look at the kit. As you can see it's an absolutely beautiful tank. I really love the Tiger one. I will definitely be fielding this in a good few of my lists just for the old Tiger factor. Because I love tigers. <laughs> what German commander doesn't? I'm sure it's uh, the tank there that most German commanders actually would actually choose to go Germans for. <laughs> it's a beautiful tank. That's the underside of it, guys. So, just to give you an idea of scale, here's a Sherman next to it. <laughs> you can see it pretty much dwarfs, dwarfs a Sherman. Uh, it's huge. The thing is massive. It's absolutely enormous. So, there we have it guys. The Tiger 1E. And I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of the awesome upcoming videos i got coming up for you. I'm Chris from Tabletop Wargamers. Thanks for watching. Keep gaming, guys.